Long before the rise of the demon electricity, our forebears craved more volume from their acoustic instruments. Oh, they tried many solutions, like building larger instruments or stealing the archtop idea from the violin world. But one of the best ideas came in the 20s from National Resonator, which developed a way to mechanically amplify ukuleles, guitars, and mandolins. Some people call them note cannons, and boy, are these things loud. You know this sound. It's unique and iconic, and it was beloved by blues, jazz, and Hawaiian musicians until electricity charged onto the scene and made resonators obsolete. Though production ceased at the outbreak of World War II, those shiny old instruments always had fans, and a modern version of the company was reborn as National Resophonic more than 20 years ago in San Luis Obispo, California. Like the originals from the 1930s, the concert-sized National Resophonic style O ukulele features a nickel-plated brass body etched with an evocative island scene and a 5.88-inch wide spun aluminum resonator cone hiding under a circular metal cover plate that looks something like a colander. It's this hand-spin cone that gives this little beast its voice. Under this metal handrest is a small piece of wood called a biscuit. It's the bridge, and more importantly, it sits on top of the cone and drives it. The cone acts much like a speaker in your stereo and reflects the sound off the ukulele's back, giving this shiny little powerhouse a tremendous amount of resonance. The effect is like putting your iPhone in a bowl to make it louder. The first strum of the strings instantly transports you back in time. There's something to the quality of the sound that just fires the synapses in your brain and says old. While it's easy to focus on the power and volume possible with a style O, it's capable of much more than loosening the fillings in your teeth or being heard at the back of a hall. Play it vigorously, and sure, it'll deliver, but when I pulled back the throttle on my strumming, I discovered that the style O has the greatest dynamic range of any ukulele I've ever played, including some genuine vintage nationals. Gently brush it with your thumb and fingers, and the sound is soft, mellow, and round just as sweet as anything you've ever heard. There's a dulcet chime to the tone's high end, but the low mid-range is really where the stylo's warmth and carrying power is. Right hand position for finger picking and strumming also reveals many more shades, from a plonky banjo-like attack near the bridge to a locomotive roar at the end of the fingerboard that could drive the most raucous acoustic band. The construction and attentive setup work for some of the finest you're likely to encounter anywhere. It's not a stretch to suggest that these instruments may be some of the finest things being made in America today. The frets were magically smooth and the action made playing the style O nearly effortless. If there's one thing that surprises everyone who played the style O, it's how heavy it is. Even when your brain grasps that it's made of brass, it's still a two pound ukulele. I also love the profile of the mahogany neck. It's just one of those shapes that fit my hand better than any glove. Access to the 15th fret where the body meets the fingerboard is effortless and getting to those last five frets won't be hard for the show-offs who feel the need for such fretboard debauchery. Many other resonator ukuleles in the market clearly look to the Style O for inspiration, and it's no wonder. With a list price of $2,500, the Style O is incredibly expensive, but when you absolutely must have the best, there's no substitute.